The sages said, O Sutta, foremost among those who know everything, please expound to us the qualification, time, and place for Deva Yajna and its results. Sutta replied, The pure house accords normal benefit in the rites of Deva Yajna, etc. The Goshala, cow shed, is ten times more beneficial than that. The bank of a tank is of ten times more benefit than that, and the root of a tulasi, bilva, or asvata tree is again of ten times more benefit than that. Similarly, a temple, the bank of a holy tank, the bank of an ordinary river, the bank of a holy river, and the banks of the seven holy gangas are each of ten times more benefit than the previous. The seven holy Gangas are Ganga, Godavari, Kaveri, Tamraparnika, Sindhu, Sarayu, and Reva. The shore of the sea is of ten times more benefit than the rivers. The summit of a mountain is ten times more beneficial than the seashore. The place where the mind is quite at home is the most excellent of all places. Yajna, dana, etc. accord full benefit in the Krita age. In the Treta age, they yield three-fourths of the benefit. In the age of Dwapara, the benefit derived is half. In the age of Kali, only one-fourth of the benefit is obtained. When half of the Kali age passes on, the benefit is only three-fourths of this one-fourth. A holy day accords normal benefit to a pure-souled devotee. O scholars, the period of transit of the sun from one Rashi, zodiac sign, to another yields ten times more benefit than that. The period of equinoxes, the period of tropical transit, the period of transit of moon or sun into Capricorn, and the time of lunar eclipse are each ten times more beneficial than the previous one. The auspicious hour of complete solar eclipse is of still more benefit than the previous. Since the sun of cosmic form is infested with poison then, there is the likelihood of ailments spreading. Hence, for the alleviation of the serious effects of poison, the devotee shall observe ceremonial ablutions, offer gifts and butter prayers during a solar eclipse. That period is specially holy inasmuch as it is intended for the alleviation of the after-effects of poison. The birth nakshatra and the concluding period of great holy rites are of the same efficacy as the period of solar eclipse. The time spent in the company of noble holy men is of the efficacy of crores of solar eclipses. Persons of unflinching devotion to austerity and perfect knowledge, yogis and ascetics, deserve holy worship since they quell others' sins. A brahmana who has repeated the Gayatri Mantra 2,400,000 times also deserves the same and accords full benefit and worldly enjoyments. The word patra, one who deserves, means one who protects the giver from downfall. The word gayatri means that which saves the reciter from downfall. Only a person of purified soul can save others, just as only a rich man can donate anything to others. A man of no means cannot give anything to others in this world. Only he who has purified himself by means of Gayatri Japa can be called a pure Brahmana. 
He alone deserves the position of presiding over all holy rites, dana, japa, homa, puja, etc. He alone can save others. Any hungry man or woman deserves charitable gifts of cooked food. An excellent brahmana must be invited on an auspicious occasion and given sufficient sums of money with piety and pleasing words. They accord all desired results. A charitable gift given to a needy person yields the utmost benefit. If it is given after entreaties, it yields only half the benefit. Monetary gifts to servants accord only one-fourth benefit. O oh, excellent brahmanas, charitable gifts to an indigent person only because he is born a brahmana accord worldly enjoyment for ten years. Gifts to a brahmana Vedic scholar accord heavenly enjoyment for ten years. Gifts to a brahmana who regularly repeats Gayatri mantra accord satyaloka for ten years. Gifts to a Brahmana devotee of Vishnu accord Vaikuntha Loka. Gifts to a Brahmana devotee of Shiva accord Kailash. All kinds of gifts accord enjoyments in the different Lokas. A person who gives cooked food on a Sunday, attended with the ten ancillary services, attains good health for ten years, even in the next birth. The ten ancillary services are honoring, inviting, providing oil bath, washing and serving the feet, bestowing cloth, scents, etc., serving side dishes of six tastes, pancakes prepared in ghee and sweet juices, betel leaves, monetary gifts, formal farewell, and following a few steps. This is called Dashanga Anadan. A man who renders ten sorts of ancillary services to ten brahmanas on a Sunday attains good health for a hundred years. If he gives the same on Monday or any other day, he attains the benefit as stipulated for that day. The benefit of food gifts is secured in this world itself, either in this birth or in the next. If in this manner he gives food on all the seven days to ten brahmanas, he secures good health and all other benefits for a hundred years. Similarly, he who gives cooked rice in this manner to a hundred brahmanas on a Sunday secures good health in Shivaloka for a thousand years. If he gives the same for a thousand brahmanas, he secures the benefit for ten thousand years. Similarly, the benefit accrued for gifts on Monday and other days can be understood by a thoughtful man. By giving food on Sunday to a thousand brahmanas whose minds have been purified by Gayatri, the devotee attains good health and other benefits in Satyaloka. By giving food to ten thousand persons, he secures the benefits in Vishnuloka. By giving it to a hundred thousand persons, he derives benefits in Rudra Loka. Those who seek learning must make gifts to children, considering them on a par with Brahma. Those who seek sons and other ends must make gifts to young men, considering them on a par with Vishnu. Those who seek knowledge must make gifts to old men, considering them on a par with Rudra. Those who seek intellect must make gifts to young maidens, considering them on a par with Bharati, goddess of speech. Excellent men seeking enjoyments must make gifts to youthful maidens, considering them on a par with Lakshmi, goddess of wealth. Those who seek purity of Atman must make gifts to old women, considering them on a par with Parvati. That which is acquired by gleaning more than one ear of corn at a time, or gleaning corns one by one, or by fees received from disciples, is called Shuddhadravya, clean wealth. This wealth yields complete benefit. Wealth acquired by acceptance of monetary gifts is called middlesome wealth. 
Wealth acquired by agricultural or trading activities is called lowliest wealth. Wealth acquired by Kshatriyas by their valor or Vaishyas by trading activities is called excellent. So also the wealth acquired by Shudras by salaries for service. Patrimony or some received from husbands forms the wealth of virtuous women. There are twelve things to be given in the twelve months beginning with Chaitra, or altogether on an auspicious occasion for the flourishing of what is cherished. They are cows, plots of land, sesame seeds, gold, ghee, cloth, food grains, jaggery, silver, salt, ash gourd, and a virgin. Gifts of cows, milk products, and cow dung ward off the sins accruing from wealth and grain, while sins connected with water, oil, etc., are warded off by cow's urine. The three kinds of sins, physical, verbal, and mental, are warded off by milk, curd, and ghee. Their nourishment can be understood by scholars. Gifts of plots of land is conducive to stability here and hereafter, O Brahmanas. Gift of sesame seeds is conducive to strength and to the conquest of premature death. Gift of gold increases the power of the gastric fire and is conducive to virility. Gift of ghee is nourishing, and that of cloth is conducive to long life. Gift of food grains is conducive to increase of food production. Gift of jaggery yields sweet food. Gift of silver is conducive to the increase in the quantity of semen, and that of salt is conducive to the happy admixture of the six tastes. The gift of pumpkin gourd is conducive to nourishment. All kinds of gifts increase everything and secure all kinds of enjoyment here and hereafter, O Brahmanas. The gift of a virgin is conducive to worldly enjoyment throughout life. Sensible persons shall make gifts of fruits according to the season, such as the fruits of jack, mango, and wood apple trees, plantains, fruits from hedges, pulses of black gram, green gram, vegetables, chilies, mustards, their plants, etc. Sensible men shall gratify the sense organs of hearing, etc., of other people for the gratification through sound, etc. It gratifies the quarters, too. Theism is that feeling in which one fully realizes that all actions are consequential. It is necessary that Vedas and sacred texts should be learned direct from preceptors. Devotion to God out of fear for kinsmen or royal punishment is of an inferior sort. An indigent person, bereft of all means of livelihood, shall worship verbally or by means of physical activities. Verbal worship means recital of mantras, hymns, and japa. Worship by physical activities means pilgrimages, observance of fast, and other rites. Whatever one does, whether it is great or small, whatever be the means employed, if that is dedicated to deities, it becomes conducive to enjoyment. The two, practice of austerities and making charitable gifts, must be carried out always. Asylum should be given according to the caste of the person concerned. It is conducive to the satisfaction of the devas and worldly enjoyments as well. Such a devotee shall always attain noble birth and enjoyments here and hereafter. If he performs the sacred rites with dedication to God, he shall attain salvation. He who reads or hears this chapter becomes righteous and endowed with knowledge.